uh, talking today about um, being a personal brand. And so I decided to put myself on the panel with Andrea Sertesh. Uh, give it up for my friend, please. <laughs> Thank you. We, we, we happen not to be brand ambassadors for M&Ms, but it just seems <laughs> that every time we get together, there's always M&Ms Cheers. near us. Cheers, you know? Yeah. Um, so, what is it like to be you? What is it like to be a person? Because you, know, you built your business creating a brand. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you protect yourself? How do you, you know, define, how, how do you let others define you? Yeah. Um, For those who don't know, uh, you have a new book, right? Yeah. It's uh, how to cheat um, with your husband? Well, yeah, cheat on your husband with your husband. Of course, the book title is in massive letters, cheat on your husband, and then it's with your husband in very small letters. And what was that other book you had? Uh, my last book was called He's Just Not Your Type, and that's a good thing. I like parentheses in my book titles. Mm -hmm. uh, a wink, yeah. So, so I write primarily dating and relationship advice, and uh, I actually made a conscious decision. My first time I was on the Today Show, which was in 2006, uh, I realized I had no web presence. I didn't have a website. This is before I joined Facebook. And I realized, oh, maybe someone's going to want to find me. Mm, <laughs> it never maybe. occurred to me. That was with my first book. And I decided I wanted to not only brand myself as the author of that book, but brand myself. Oh, by the way, what did, how did the U.S. government recently brand you? Oh, as an, it's, as an it's, extraordinary. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm Canadian originally, and I'm in the U.S. as extraordinary ability, which is ridiculous. What's your, what's your extraordinary ability? I'm just, I'm extraordinary. Oh, okay. No, I'm extraordinary as a relationship personality. That's another funny thing about being a personal brand. You're actually, your job is as a personality. So it just sounds ridiculous every time I say, I'm an extraordinary personality. It sounds, you know, it sounds funny, but do, it's Do you ever outsource actually, yourself? I've never outsourced myself, <laughs> no. Um, no, I mean, so, so do you use any sort of automated tweeting tools? Do you, no, I, I don't. So it's only you? It's only me, and it's an exhausting uh, and exhilarating and fun and crazy thing to be a you? person, to be an, any of us, you know, in all these social networks, and it's kind of nonstop. Um, and I haven't yet figured out how to, I, so I host stuff, I coach, I'm a spokesperson, I'm an author, I'm an advice columnist, I'm a speaker. All these things I haven't figured out. There's um, no manual necessarily. Yeah, how to actually uh, outsource that. But there are ways, and Jeff, I don't, I believe there are 15 Jeff Palvers, so no. you're everywhere. So uh, I want to know from you, actually, this is just a conversation, as you can tell, but something I always think when you're creating any brand, not just a personal brand, I think it's really important to know in, what are the three adjectives that really define you and your brand. And I know when I look at you and what you've created, I would come up with words like innovative and creative and hugs. <laughs> um, but what, what are your words? Hmm, you know, I should have asked you for those questions in advance. <laughs> um, I, you know, I don't know. When I, um, you know, a lot of times I just do things not necessarily planning to do it, I just do it. I have this uh, crazy ability to focus on something and make it happen. I don't look for any, I learned not to ask for permission to do stuff. And when it comes to branding, I mean, the, you know, for me, sometimes the best de offers, I, uh, deals I do are the ones I don't do. Mm -hmm. It's like a lot of business opportunities. You want to do something, you're waiting for it to happen, and then at the last minute, they, someone tries to screw you by changing the terms. You still want to do it, but not doing it. And that sort of defines me in terms of how I do what I do. I, um, you know, I, I, I really try to stray away from people who call themselves experts or gurus or otherwise. Uh, Things like that. I just, you know, they may be, but I mean, let someone else call them that. Don't call yourself that. Yeah. I, so, I, I, as far as what I call myself, um, I don't really have words. I, I have feelings. You know, I've, mm -hmm. I've learned to be vulnerable. Uh, I've learned to be real, and I've learned to to feel and to touch in ways which I never thought were possible. I have found that, you know, through the social web, you're able to reach people's souls in ways which. You know, maybe from a spiritual perspective, it's understanding because I can't necessarily, it doesn't make rational sense, but you can feel. And, you know, when you're having conversations with people, the other thing I've, you know, to, one of the biggest challenges I see in, in how people communicate online is, is something which is a, a, one of the symptoms of Asperger's, which is 
when someone is talking to you, but they're actually talking at you, not with you. And how often is it that when we're having conversations, particularly you know, on Twitter or whatever, and, and, and someone's broadcasting, but not listening, and they're constantly, they're not in really engaging in conversations although they think they are. And I, I like to believe that most of the time, if not all the time, I'm always listening, but sometimes I can't always get back to people. I mean, I, when I do start my day, in, in, when I'm in the States, I do say good morning. Mm -hmm. I've been doing that for a very long time. And what's incredible, the amount of people who I connect with, there's some people who I'll see just once, mm -hmm. some that I'll see depending upon the mood every day, every week, every month, every year. And there's some conversations that just continue. But it's, it's part of it. So as far as, you know, but I use that also to help define me because I, I don't believe in having gatekeepers. You know, I, I, I meet with lots and lots of people around the world for different reasons. Uh, sometimes I meet with startups, sometimes I meet with just people who are just incredibly wow. And I, you know, I never really liked it when I had to go jump through hoops to find someone, so I try to make myself available too. And Yeah, I think uh, ex you're very accessible. So, so maybe, so it's accessible on one level, vulnerable on another level. I, I'm, you know, the other, the other one I'll let someone else define. I, I'd say, well, we probably all have many, many adjectives with you. But I'd say innovative is a, is a huge part of you and how well, I see you. And thank you. You, can, you constantly, I think that's a big lesson for all of us, whether we're any brand, uh, to constantly reinvent. Um, and, but uh, you have to know. I think version 6.2 of me right now. <laughs> yeah. But you have to still know, the reason I asked about the three words, and that's a really simplistic way of looking at it, but I think those are your core values. Those are your brand values. So I think it's really important to know what does your brand stand for and then to make decisions what to say yes or no to based on that. Um, I'm in an industry, dating and relationship industry, uh, that feeds off of negativity, fear-based advice. You're not getting any younger. You better settle. Things are really, you know, problematic at home. It's all. It's some of it's incredibly negative, and I think part of so how what do you fight that? I fight it. Be, I I I think an important part of being a brand is differentiating yourself, and I think one way I hope I differentiate myself is by I actually dedicated my last book to people who should never settle when they settle down, and by trying to empower people to find the fun, the connection. Um, the joy again in, in dating and relationships and I fight it by I say no a lot to things that don't align with that and it's hard because reality TV for instance you know I've been approached for opportunities that are really sound really cool but I would have to change who I am and, and the core of my brand and what I really stand for if I participated in certain things so it is it is a challenge to kind of figure out what to say yes and no to. And, and I would argue that maybe sometimes you also want to maybe put yourself to the edge. I mean, I, I, I believe in taking chances. I believe in making mistakes. I think that some of the best mistakes we make or, or create the best things that we learn about ourselves, that if you look at modern times and just what thing, objects that are in our lives, most people did not go out to invent the things we use and we depend on. There was someone else's good mistake. Right. And that I don't necessarily think that we should hold back on creativity and that we should allow ourselves the opportunity to fail because, yeah, you learn more from failures than successes, but at the same time, there's just this creative energy which just grows into something. So I, I kind of take the approach that depending upon what brand I am at that moment, I'm willing to push the limits. I'm willing to, you know, when I helped uh, create Vonage, for example, you know, what I discovered was that if I were to go to, to my telco friends and tell them I wanted to launch a voiceover broadband telephone service, they'll tell me all the reasons why it won't work. They'll tell me all the reasons why it failed. So you know what we ended up doing is when we started the company and I was chairman, basically everybody who was on the core team had no telecom experience. We discovered that if you hire people who don't know something is poss isn't possible, they figure out how to make it possible. So, you know, so one of the core values I was really trying to push out on was the fact that nothing is impossible, mm -hmm. although it's many words. But it's, 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 it's allowing yourself a chance to be successful. Don't, don't box yourself in. And, you know, there's, um, I, I think many people have a challenge with themselves, a balance between what their soul says, what their heart says, and what their mind says. Yeah, I actually, I, I always call it the should want test. So the litmus test is, am I doing this because, you know, stop shutting all over yourself is the... I, I, you may have heard that expression, but it's, do, am I doing this because I should or because I want to? And authenticity has come up so much today, 
And when you're living authentically as a brand, as a person, but as a brand, people can tell. And the more you step into what you want and not what you think you're, you should do based on what, you know, what other people are doing in that industry, the more people will connect with you because it's authentic. And I, and I think that goes to also defining your values and stuff. And so you know, some people who are much younger were willing to take chances, but when they got older, the world came down on them and put them in boxes. You know, I, I think I'm definitely unemployable. I think I've worked for two t companies my entire life. <laughs> rest of the other time, I've always worked for myself, and I constantly fire myself because I, <laughs> I, I try to, like, create worlds that may not necessarily be doable, but, you know, it all goes to what values are and stuff. And um, I do think that we have chances now to really redefine a lot for, for where we go. But if you, it's like taking that multiple choice test. You know, most of the time, that first answer that your gut tells you was the right answer. Maybe mm -hmm. occasionally you went back, you changed it, and you were right. But... And it's the same thing about life decisions, it's the same thing about many things. And so, but when you allow your mind or your heart to get involved too much, you can't always go back. And then you yeah. make these decisions that put you down a path. And I try to find ways to bring myself back or help others come back and, and realize that they, when they look at who they are, where they went to, yeah. and that's either as a personal brand or that's just as a person. As a person. I mean, being authentic is the easiest thing you can be and it's the hardest thing you can be because it means... And you're in 24 by 7 being that. Yeah. I mean... You know, it's not so different, like you said, it's, it's in branding and life and love. I mean, how many times people on a first date will send me a three-page email to deconstruct what happened, and I usually write back with one sentence, which is, how did you feel on the date? Were you having fun? Are you curious to learn more about the person? That's all you need to know. You don't need to know if you're going to marry the person. We get so far ahead of ourselves right. you, you and everything, to, and, and we, we don't, we're not guided all the time by actually how we're and, responding. And then people forget about living in that moment. Yeah. You, you, so what happens is that you, you, you overanalyze the situation and you lose the moment that was the wow because you were overanalyzing the situation. And, yeah. and I think that if you're going to let yourself live in the state of now, that there are lots of, there, there may be consequences, but you know, I believe that if you live in the moment, as long as you're having fun in that moment, there should be no regrets. It's just the path. But if you overthink it, then you lose that opportunity. And, and again, it goes to who you are and how you, and how you present yourself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, so are you having fun today? I'm having fun. This is a good sugar rush. Yes, um, it is. Yeah. I, th I think also something you touched on before, which is um, not listening, just talking. Uh, big, big issue, obviously, everywhere, not just in social media. But I also think... Uh, you know, social is fantastic, phenomenal way to engage an audience, but we also have to take things as you know and do so well offline, and that's why we're here today. I think a big uh, issue with a lot of brands, personal brands, is that they exist in one medium. They're, they're either they have, you know, thousands and thousands of followers and they don't think that they have to go and meet people in person, or it's, you know, I meet authors all the time who say, I have a following, I don't really need a Facebook account, or it really has to be a holistic, multi-platform, uh, and sometimes exhausting <laughs> effort to connect. No. Because you, you build it, it's not if you build it, they will come with this stuff, right? When you're branding yourself, it's you have to meet your audience when, where they are, not where Cause, you are. Because people forget you know, that they actually have an audience, they take it for granted. And a lot of people who rise up to fame, you know, change their personalities and stuff, but they, but, and they're obnoxious as hell on the way up, they forget there's a way down. Almost everybody, now, maybe not everybody, but most people, um, rise and fall and if you're not nice on the way up they'll fuck you on the way down and it's well they're just not nice to you um, i think that's a really good way to end this <laughs> no but before i do um i, I just want to say a few things first um if you stop the music um you know i've been in my conference i can actually do this right <laughs> maybe i'm not sure about that i know i want to be fair i know but i mean seriously i think people who lose sight of where they're going you know, lose that balance. And, and, and no, people are not necessarily out to get you, but it's, if you, you get, I think that it's like, I think the Beatles said it, right? In, in, in the end, the love you take is equal to the love you make. And that's sort of what I was getting at, that if you create a balanced environment where it's a give and a take, it works. And whether it's a personal brand or a corporate brand, it's all there. I just thought maybe, um, because this is pretty rare for me, I never do Q&A with the audience, um, and never have I done Q&A with you here. Uh, if anyone had any questions, I'd give myself three minutes to answer <laughs> on the clock. Uh, any questions? And you pick them. Oh, so.
All right, so, so I just need to repeat this because for people who are listening to the broadcast. Um, so as people who bring us people together and we find someone who's lost a direction, what do we do? Um, it depends upon the situation. I mean, there's some people who you just feel that you know, need, they need to go through certain things to experience it. It's like so when you're a kid and your parents tell you, don't touch the stove, you're going to get burnt, how many people actually still touch the stove? And how many people with kids told their kids, don't touch the stove, and their kids got burnt? <laughs> And, and so depending upon the, the level of direction that you're off and stuff, and, and who am I to necessarily judge anyone, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be here myself. So, um, but if I see people who are looking for help in a way that I, that's meaningful, I try to help them. Or I try to share an experience with them. I try to, you know, maybe not, um, I, I just try to get people to connect at level, because I think that on a soulful kind of way, there's something special about meeting somebody. And as trite as it may sound, that the next person you meet can change your life, I believe it. And I believe that you touch people's lives. And you never know what you're going to do that's going to affect someone else, but you just try. And so I, I, I enjoy the opportunity to create serendipity and joy and delight in people's lives by the accidental meeting of the person you're sitting next to or the person you're standing next to. And it's all that, that for me, that's, it's more the, the opportunity to do that, not so much the, the focus and direction to yeah. it. Um, I, I think actually a big part of my philosophy and I think my brand is people want to be challenged, not changed. Um, people want to be challenged to be their authentic selves in life and in love and everywhere in business. <laughs> um, so it's challenging people not because you're imposing your own values on that person, but it's because you know that person can go deeper with his or her own true values and core self. And, and I think that's when you do it in a positive way and an empowering way, um, it speaks to people because they want, they secretly, even if they don't consciously know it, want to be challenged to be their best self. All right, one quick question. Anyone else? Over here, yes. Affecting what? I'm sorry? No, I, I think authenticity wins. You know, one of the big challenges, I know I'm going to run again, I'm sorry. Um, look, I, when, when we had email, the, the people who first made a lot of money on email were the spammers because they could, they could basically be anonymous. And one of the nice things about the social web, more or less, although there are dogs and cats and, and phony people, <laughs> there is authenticity there that we know who you are. And that works. And I think that we're living... I believe that the advent of the social web is bringing humanity closer to a level we haven't seen in a very long time. Mm -hmm. I think the world's getting closer and that we're somehow connecting. And, it, and it one of those attributes is because we're authentic and real. Yeah, and, and I think like another, sorry for all the taglines, but <laughs> I have to, you know, I, I write self-help and one thing that I always say, but it's really relevant to this discussion is you can't have intimacy without vulnerability. And I think that applies online too. You can't connect with an audience without, I think it's actually really good to admit when you don't know things and want to learn from others. It's really good to uh, say you screwed up and it's a learning, growing experience. I mean, this is, what, this is what feels authentic to your audience. They'd prefer that. Perfect is boring. If you're a perfect brand, it's, it's, it's boring, <laughs> it's inauthentic and people can sniff right through it. So it's okay whether you're a personal brand or a huge company like JetBlue who was up here earlier saying, yeah, we screwed up and we want to we wanna solve it for you. I mean, I think that goes really far because the customer can tell the difference. Okay. Anyway, thank you all <laughs> anyway, for listening. Anyway, thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you.